Okay, guys. I'm Bree. I'm Freddie. What's up, guys? <laughs> this is another episode of Be Inspired. So it's uh, this is Southwest Freddie, right on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, that's cool. Me. So he's in an artist, and he's gonna share his story. Freddie, you can start off. I don't care, however. I'm just so excited to be here because um, we're from the same neighborhood. Yes, I, love, I yeah. was raised yeah. on Homer, the street Homer. Oh, nice. So that's like three streets, four yeah. streets for me. Yeah. So, but when we were younger, I did not know who you were. I didn't, I didn't like. I went to Western. I think when you went to Western, yeah, yeah, for a little bit, and even in school, I still didn't. There, I was like, <laughs> I wasn't that popular. No, I, just, I mean, no, but you kind of were. But it's like it was like the beginnings of like what you're doing now. Like I had a friend, and she's like, "Oh, you know, he's not allowed to uh, tag anymore." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" It's just like, you know, Freddie, he's not allowed to do that because something happened where he's like, he's like taking it for real now. And I'm like, uh, okay. So like I knew of you and like what you were doing, but it was not like a thing. Right, right, right. Now fast forward, it's like you're doing it's it. Like a thing. It's, it's like you're doing it. You're doing it. So tell us, like tell us how this all happened. Like how did you find art? How did you know like this is what you were going to put energy into? I think, um, I don't know. It. It's it's like coming from like a first generation family in 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 the U.S. Like I'm at first I thought I was like the only kid dealing with that kind of issue, but like really it's like you you got this pressure that like all right you got to do something like your your parents like came here illegal like you know made this sacrifice to have give you a better life, so they want you to be a lawyer they want you to be a doctor they want you to like have all these like really really hard on expectations, and so like. In the beginning, I just didn't see it as a career. Like, I just liked to write on shit because it was, like, an OCD that I had that, like, I liked to just doodle. And, like, it, it would help get through, like, school. I hated being in school. I didn't really, I didn't like math. I didn't like, mm-hmm. I didn't like the concept of te- the way that some teachers teach. It was just boring. It was like, like, I don't know. I just wasn't hooked. And so when I started doodling, like, that, like, just always, like, interested me. And, like, it was like therapy, you know? And then when... I got, like, I want to say, like, the first, first commission stuff was, like, due to a few friends that I had. It was, like, they're like, yo, we want you to paint our room. Like, how much, bro? Like, what? So, like, I got excited because it's, like, yo, like, I don't know anybody getting rooms painted. You yeah, know, like, yeah. <laughs> custom rooms. So, I was, like, oh, like, this could be a thing. And I had never, you know, like, you know, back then I was just tagging. I was doing graffiti. I grew, I grew up doing graffiti. That's been my background. And so, like. You know that that started since I was like thirteen, and and so like when I when I actually got asked to do the room, I was like, oh well, fuck yeah, it's the first time I actually can take my time, and it's legal, and like, you know, like it's for my boy, so like I yeah. want to make it sweet. He's gonna let me make it sweet because it's like we have permission. We don't have to. We don't have to like worry about like it being dark. Like none of the, none of the stuff of like that I had to deal with like in a graffiti street environment where it's like illegal. It, like you don't you don't have much time. You you gotta be in. You gotta be out. And so, um, when I got to do that, one room turned into like ten, and then I think I stopped for a while, and then I tried to go. I, I had a girlfriend at the time in high school who like really pushed me, and so like she was like, "Yo, like you need to go to art school," and like you know. So then here I am, like fuck, I never got an A in high school. I think I got one A, which wasn't like, like health or like no, I, it was actually history. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of random, yeah. you know. <laughs> But it's you want to know why? I think I just liked her style. Like her style of teaching was like, "Yo, like I'm gonna give the lecture today, but you gotta go home read these chapters in the book, mm. and then here's your homework on it." And that was like so like laid out for me. And like usually every other teacher, like man, like I just they had other like ways of teaching that just sucked. And it was like this this lady's just straightforward. I can do her work. I don't gotta deal with her, you know. And like she doesn't gotta deal with me. Like I'm just in and I'm out. If I miss a day. She gives me the homework, it gives me the the chapters I got to read, and it's like, yo, I, like, it was like a fair deal. And, like, so she understood me, too. Like, I feel like some some teachers, like, don't take their job. Like, I don't want to say she didn't take it serious. She took it serious, but, like, some teachers are just, like, yo, like. In a box, maybe? Well, like, she kind of give you more freedom? Well she, well, she was just more, like, chill. Like, she was more like us. She wasn't, and she wasn't, she was an older woman. So, I think it was, uh, what was her name? Uh, I can't remember her name now. But it's been been a while, but <laughs> she she was just chill, and and then from then on, like 
I mean, I, everything else was like B's or C's. I never got, that was the only A I got in high school. So it's like, fuck, I gotta learn to apply. And like, so then, like, my first, like, option, she, like, you know, my help, my girlfriend helped me get into, like, community college. So we, we, I did that. I did, I got prereqs there. And then I transferred over to art school. And then, like, I did, like, three semesters at CCS. And then I was like, yeah, I can't, like, I don't know. I, I loved it. It was, it was, it was a really good experience to, to get better at drawing. But it was just like, yo, I felt like I didn't belong there. Like, they didn't fuck with, like, you being from Detroit or something. Or they didn't like the artwork that I, the background I came from, you know. But that you got all these other people doing weird shit and it's, like, considered art. And, like, I thought <laughs> I thought that was, like, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I'm just trying to be a good illustrator and, like, you know, like, learn this, learn that. But you have to understand where elements I'm coming from. And, like, the thing is, like, none of the teachers understood, like, it's very rare you're gonna meet somebody that's like, yo, okay, that's fucking hip hop, yo, that's fucking street, like graffiti, that's 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 great, like we we rock with that. And in a in a prestige like art school environment, it's like no, dude, they found they at the time they like frowned upon it, and so I was like, well, fuck you guys, I'm not gonna pay all this money to like feel like I don't belong here and like flunk out and shit. And so that's actually what ended up happening. Like I ended up getting like academic probation and shit. I tried to stay there as long as I could, so I couldn't no more. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not getting no more loans. I'm not doing none of that. And so, um, once I like leaped out, like I did have a teacher in CCS, which I do admire and appreciate because he was like, he like one day, like he saw that I was struggling and like frustrated. He's like, you know what? Like if I tell you something, like don't be discouraged or nothing. And I was like, all right. He's like, honestly, you can drop out right now and you'll be okay. Like he told me that. And so like, he's the only teacher out of all those are like, I felt like it was a scam or some shit. Cause he's the only teacher that was there that was like, you know what? you'll be all right, you know, and, like, I, I kind of knew it, because, like, I, I mean, outside of, like, like, wanting to learn, I was just really independent, and, like, that, that, that's, like, a big issue with me, it's, like, if, you know, like, if you, I don't want to pay 40 grand, like, I would think about that whole scope of, like, all right, I'm paying 40 grand a semester, and they're throwing 10 things at me, and I'm only learning one, like, that shit, I'm losing here, like, I could put 40 grand somewhere else, you know, like, that's the mindset you would have, because you went to you went to college too. You may you might have not paid forty grand a semester. You probably paid like ten. But still, it's like you got to do a full time job. You got to commute. You got to like, you, I mean, like I didn't like I didn't have that compact like four point oh student route. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. like, like I had that dummy route, and it's like <laughs> that that like college for dummy route, and it's like oh shit, all right, like it's bad. I had to go to like it was baby steps to even get there, and then it's like. When I'm there, they're like, well, you don't even need to be here. Then it's like, oh, shit, I did all this for this. Like, which was a, like a, a blessing in disguise. But it's like, at the same time, it's like, shit, man. Like, you know, it just, it goes to show, like, there's there's students in there that, like, you know, they're good for that shit. Like, they're good for teachers giving them instructions and them following instructions their whole life. So that's why, like, Reebok, Nike, all these, like, companies hire, you know, students from college because, nine times out of ten these kids can follow instructions and then they can work under somebody and like that's not the direction that i wanted like you know with all due respect like you know shout out to everybody doing that stuff you know that's awesome but it's like yo like i want as much creative freedom as i want and i want to kind of select the things that i like my inspirations and and I, and you know just not be limited to to, to what i want to do and like and, and kind of control you know what i want people to understand for me too you know instead of like doing it for a grade or to like you know, like having that pressure, like, you know, I just, I just want to be a little more free. And I think that's every artist's dream. And so like, I, I was like, you know what? Well, like I'd rather die trying than, you know, be somewhere else and, and trying to please others and, and die doing that. So it was like, well, fuck it. Like, let me, let me do my own thing. And then I jumped in like at first and then uh, I've been doing it since. So um, I think I, first place I started was like, you know, Southwest and like, uh, the cool thing is, it's like I was interning at like this. Uh, it's like a steel company. They they do a lot of other stuff in the community too, which which is awesome. It's uh, over on Clark Street. It's okay. ideal. So I did I did like a year of almost a little over a year interning with them, and then um, I met some people out at DTE. I got a scholarship. That that's what happened. And then when I got a scholarship. I got this cool ass mentor, and then I got like this other the, one of the ladies that was on the board members. She, like, reeled me up right quick. She's like, yo, like, I want you to come work for me. And, like, she was over at DTE. So I did four years interning with her, four summers. What did you do there interning? What were you learning? Totally different shit from art. But it was so cool because it was, like, corporate environment. So, like, I was, like, learning that corporate side 
and and it, at first there was no connection. I was like, what the hell? I'm like, you know, but I was gonna make good money. But the good, like, the most important thing was like, I was learning how to network. I was learning how to get business cards. I was learning how to give business cards. I was learning to send emails, to send invoices, mm-hmm. to follow up with people, to sh- put shit on a calendar. Like, you know, like all the, all the everything that's in corporate like that revolves around uh, the logistics. I was learning that shit, and it was like going to school for free because it's like. I'm getting paid to do this. So it's like at this point, it's like they train me for like two, three weeks and like not even train me for one week. And then I'm like, boom, I'm on it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they love me. And I, I think I love them as much as they love me. <laughs> Shout out to that. <laughs> to that TTE. And like they they like they really helped me out as far as like figuring out how to run a business. And like not only that, I met just the best networks, you yeah, know, like. Yeah. And so like when I networked and I met all these people, um, eventually I. uh you know, I, I started working in the neighborhood, and then I started doing like small bit. I think my first bit local like Southwest Freddy gig was a uh, Coogan's Bar, and that was like the back. It's right next door to our rancho, and so mm-hmm. man, it was like it looks so bad. It's still there. So in case anybody that's local <laughs> listening, they can go see it. It's it's still back there. Um, and and like from then on, like you know, I was just just consistency. Yeah. Um, I you know I was at one point like I was working on the floor of my room. I didn't have a table. I didn't even, like, I was just working with what I had and then slowly start to, you know, build up, build up, build up. And then, you know, you eventually, you, you figure sh- shit will work out because as it, it'll get bad before it gets better. But at the same time, it's like everything you're, you're going through, you're kind of getting it out the way first. It's almost like, all right, you're going to go through all this first and then it'll get better. So it's like if you can get, Let's just get all this out the way so then it can get better. And I'm like, that's how I look at it. A lot of people get discouraged when things go wrong. And and that could have went wrong. That could have been the case in college. But it's like, the thing about it is it's like when I realize, like, this is where I belong. Like, I want, I really, if I'm going to, like, invest and, and try in something, let me try it my way. I already tried it this way. Let me try it my way. And, like, my way, like, it turned out to be, like, the best route for me, yeah. you know. Which I don't, I don't, I don't believe in college and and doing what I did, you know, I would, if you got a good opportunity and, and you're responsible and you're, you're crisp when it comes to deadlines and stuff like that and everything that comes with that, that college consistency and, and you're okay doing it for free for four years f- or six, you know, do it, stick with it, you know, um, there's a ton of cool stuff you can learn there. But like, in my case, it was like just so much culture clash that it was like, yo, I need, I need to come back home. I need to be like in my environment. I need to I need to breathe a little bit and like the cool thing is is like when I did that DT internship I had mentors so like those mentors they weren't like like on me weekly you know like it'd be like every two weeks we'd email so like I'm getting good guidance like that instead of having to pay for it pay 60,000 you know $200,000 you know uh, degree it's almost like these people that that were like that I was like getting mentored from they they've been they're like up there you know like mm-hmm. they, they run businesses big did you companies you have to go out and get these mentors and they just kind of fall on your lap it, it was like a blessing in disguise because <clears throat> when i was working at the i was working at the steel company um frank is he's the the chairman there <clears throat> he's um one of the biggest suppliers in the city of detroit for for contracting so he knows all the big guys everywhere and like he he me and him got along since the first time we met because man like i'm just i can tell you i'm not your average like kid you know like i i could be like you know at the time i I didn't know how like ghetto i was and like it's kind of funny because like i don't i don't portray it like some people try really hard and it's like i'm the opposite like i'm trying to be normal because like as you get older you know you can't you got to learn to like violence isn't the answer like yeah. you can't aggressively get into arguments with people verbal verbal assaults with people and like whatever mm-hmm. and like when we were growing up it was like everybody had a chip on their shoulder yeah. and had a short fuse <laughs> and it's like you know these aggressive people and like now it's like all right i gotta be adult an adult about this and like you know i can't i can't always blur out what i'm really thinking you know and like when you're young it's like who cares and like like that's how i met him when i met him i was just like he'd say something and i didn't know who he was but it's like hey man you're not gonna disrespect me that he was just testing me or I don't know what he's doing, but it was like, you know, we met on that basis where he was just like, like, you know, just, just 
he didn't know who I was, but he was getting a feel for who I was and then making sure I was who I was. And then he's like, oh, all right, I like this kid. And then I was like, all right, I like this guy too. You know, like he knew what he was, like I knew what he was doing, but he, I knew that he knew what he was doing too. And like, it was like, a, we just clicked. And then from that on, like we just always stand in touch and like he hired me to work for him. And then like, he was like the first dude to give me like a paid gig. And then when I saw that I could make real money, I was like, all right, well, I started to use that budget mo- that money as budget money for the neighborhood. So it's like if I make a big make money off a big project, I'll let that money like lay over, and instead of going to like the mall or like somewhere to spend it, I I use it to buy more paint. I use it to buy like more supplies, and then uh, with that money, like or with those supplies, I'd go do like a job that in the neighborhood that's not going to pay me that same amount of money but be like don't worry about it like i'll do it for 300 500 bucks three to 500 bucks and it'd be like a big mural or something but like you know they they didn't have to come out of that much pocket because that somebody else provided that platform you know and it's like in a way these people that are investing in me they're also investing in the community because it would be like i i always come back and give it like you know like and like up until now it's gotten a lot better because like you know, I went from doing really small, like, at garages and shit, like, dumb, like, you know, little, little businesses to, like, now, like, the last wall they gave me is probably one of the craziest walls in the city. It's, like, spring walls, like, to me, you know, like, it's, like, that's, like, my daily route when I was living at my mom's. It's, like, there's, I know people, like, that I, that still live in Southwest, that that's their daily route. They go catch mm-hmm. 75, they go downtown, and they come back, and that's the up and down that every day so like that to me like to have that spot is more meaningful to me than any price that you can put on any big job because it's like yo it's like my neighborhood you know like everybody has like they're like every like you know we have eminem or big sean or like t grizzly but and then like you know chicago has kanye and like common and all these people so it's like that like gave me my stamp in my city and my hood because it's like you know, like, that was my confirmation, I felt like. You know, yeah. it's like, when the city of Detroit hires you to do something, you know, that they feel that, you know, is yours, it's like, fuck yeah, that's me, you know? Like, yeah. you own it. And so, so I think that, that that's, like, a big stepping stone. And, like, um, backtracking a little bit, like, after dropping out, um, when I started interning in, at DTE, uh, with that money, I started to invest in travel. So when I was 19, the first thing that I did was, uh, it was my first time going to Europe. I, I bought a plane ticket to go. Um, there's a photographer in the neighborhood, Eric Howard. He uh, he does nonprofit and he does he runs a the Alley Project, and that's a little bit of where I like started doing graffiti. It was like he provided that platform of a garage where people can come practice on, and so he he somehow submitted like some work, and it got featured in the BNL in uh venice tell us what bnl is the biennale is like this big art like this huge art show art festival and it's like it's probably one of the biggest in the world and and they have one year is architecture the other year it's like fine art i think we 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 got featured in the architecture one because he submitted a proposal for his project of of what the alley project was and i just happened to be a feature as like you know, some something that was a part of that, like, foundation mm. to that project. And so, you know, he wanted to make sure that if we, we got it, we ended up getting a feature there. He wanted to make sure that I could go see it, you know, like, actually, or both of us, you know, we could actually witness our feature in, it's somewhere in fucking, yeah. uh, in Venice, you know. And so when we found out we were going to Venice, he, like, reached out to, like, that's who did it all. He's, like, super organized. He, like, reached out to, like, Montana. We reached out to, like, Montana is a paint company in, in Europe. So we reached out to spray paint companies. We reached out to, like, graffiti artists. We did the whole thing. We, like, planned a trip. We looked out around cities that were nearby and planted, like, a big, like, love. Yeah, you're plotting, like. A, yeah, like a big triangle. <laughs> yeah. So, we, you know, so that that was my first. Like, I, he's like, yo, if it's going to be our, your first time. And I think it, it was the second time going to Europe. He's like, if, if it's going to be your first time, we got to do it right. And I was like, all right, all right. You know, like, I was, like, getting excited. And so we, we went the first city, we you know, we went, I went that year as the first time going to Europe. And it was like, man, I met so many good friends that year. It, it, I met, they were such good friends that the next year I went again. to, this, to I went back to Italy the next year and Paris. And, no, and, and, and that led me going to Paris. And that led me, like, every year that I went to Europe, it turned into some crazy-ass trip. Because, yeah. 
like I only I had a plan to go to certain places, but I always ended up going to different places. Because, like, for whatever reason, like, the last time I went to Europe, I had a plan to go to St. Petersburg uh, in Russia. And I already had my flight and everything, and I had my uh, Airbnb booked and everything. But to get to Russia, you need a visa. And I think you got to get it ahead of time. I, I didn't know, at least. And they said if you didn't have a visa upon arrival, they'll return, they'll make you go back. So I was like, fuck. So then I ended up buying a ticket to Rome. And I was like, it, it's shit. Like, I ended up going to Rome, and I had a great time. And I met some crazy friends crazy friends uh really funny really like street like that dude like it almost felt like i was in detroit but like it's the italian version and it was like you know you meet a lot of great a lot of gritty people and i love that like I, to me like i love all the clean preppy people like you know like that's awesome that you know they're really nice you tend to be really friendly but something about like the street people all around the world like i i like fit in with them because it's like yo like I feel like we all feel out of place sometimes, like with the world, because like the way that people frown upon us or look look at us, it's like, well, what are you looking at? <laughs> people almost walk around with that aggression because we, at all times, we feel like we're being judged, and it's like, you know, when I'm when I'm around those people, I like I kind of get it, and it's like we kind of get each other without even knowing each other, and it's like hell yeah, like we can vibe and like yeah. we go do stuff together, and 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 they already know what I like to do because it's like we're the same people, and it's like. It's kind of cool. Like, you just fit in where you get in, you know? Yeah. And, like, and so, like, I think investing in travel was, like, the greatest thing I could ever do because you're just meeting artists. Meeting artists, bigger art, older artists that have more experience, uh, that have a different perspective than you. Like, that's on the other side of the globe. It's, like, you know, that's that's where I wanted to be. I, if, I, if, I wanted, if I was going to spend all this money, you know, going to art school, I'd rather go to, like, real virtual art school where it's, like, you know, you're going to see all these museums, you know, to like the Louvre in, in, in Paris. I mean, you know, like you go to the, the cathedrals in uh, Rome and, and in Italy, like all these like churches and shit. You go look at all this like art that, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have access to. And so like all that's the stuff that I want to spend my money on if I'm going to be making any money. And like, you know, you know, fast forward down the line, like, you know, I mean, I think it's like for almost five years that I've been traveling and like, man, it's. It's, it's it's been a, a long journey it's been it's been great honestly like um I, I recommend anybody out there listening that like you instead of like buying the newest sneakers or like the newest purses all these like materialistic stuff like you know put that to the side you know when you're like older and you're chilling and invest in your travel like get out there go see go try new food you know go meet go meet your soulmate that's like somewhere out there you know like you know i mean it's just so much potential yeah. being in a different environment. Like, there's nothing like home, though. Like, I'll tell you that. Like, I've been everywhere, but I still love Southwest because it's like I could be somewhere else for, you know, years at a time, six months at a time. But then I'll miss home. You know, there's something about home that, you know, it's just, you know, it's where you belong. At, at, at least I feel, it's where I, I feel like I belong in Detroit regardless. But I like to get out, you know. You, yeah, of course. You branch a little bit away and then you come home and you apply the things that you learn and then you know you kind of get a better perspective on what needs to be done back home anyway so it's like it's it's, it's always a good break to take i see so it sounds like <clears> the <throat> root of all this is like from it came from like the skill so i think like people have this the thing like they just idea of like happening overnight how long did it take you to really master and like develop and the skill to where now you can use it to travel the world i think it it's, a, it's an ongoing thing i think that's why i do it um I think that when I first started, I didn't see the potential that I, I didn't really see the potential, but it was just, I believed in the potential. I just didn't see it yet. And, and, and when you first start, I think it was the hardest part was starting. I think as I, as I get older and it gets a little hard, it, it just, there's nothing like when I first started, it's never as hard as when I first started. So me knowing that, like me having that, no matter what level I am in life, it, it's humbling to mm -hmm. to know that you know as long as it's not how when i first started i'm okay and that's always a good reminder like in anything you do if you're in college and you're a broke college kid right now it's like it's not as bad as when you first started when mm -hmm. you first started it's like fuck you don't have a rhythm you don't have a direction you don't know what the hell you're doing and like now at least you know you're broke because of this you know you need to stop spending your money on that and it's like you figure things out more with, with just, you know, trial and tribulation. And, like, mm -hmm. I think that the thing about, I love about art is 
as much as you put in, you get back. Always. A hundred times out of a hundred times. It's like the universe gives you right. If you put in a hundred, you get a hundred. If you put in 30, you get 30. And it's like, that's that's what I that's the kind of world I want to live in. That to me that's that's a perfect ideal world. If if my love life was the same way, or if, if my relationship, or if anything else in my life was the same way, same format, or if I give if I give this much, I get this much back. It'd be the shit because like up until now, like I figured that's the only thing that I can say like has been like like loyal and like I put in my work and it's given right back. So like I don't want to be doing anything else. Like like yeah. I'm I'm so hooked on on what I'm doing that it's like. You know, I, I I think it's it's that you know they, it's a cliche thing to say, but it's a, people always like yo like, you know, make sure that what you do, what what you major in, it's something that you love, so that it never feels like work. What really like, it's a lot of work, but it just has to be something that like, excites you, you know, on a daily basis. Like mm-hmm. you're inspired by like so many like you have, you get to go out and, and and find inspiration on so many things that it's like. You know, it, it's it's it, that's the fun stuff, and and you gotta like like what you do, yeah. you know. So that and, and you gotta see progression because I think that that to me that no, there's nothing more that excites me that to see when I'm getting better. Like that makes me like, hell yeah, like okay, this is looking good, and and I need to stick with this, and I need to, and I can't give up and, and consistency, you know, mm-hmm. because I think that um, there's a time and place for everything, and, and and I think that right now, like where I am, it's like. It took me a minute to get here, but, like, now that I'm in this level, it, it's, like, uphill both ways because you go up one hill and then you're at the bottom of another one. So, it's, like, you know, you, sorry, you're consistently climbing. And, and and to me, like, I think people not necessarily should always um, pick a career that they love. Pick a career that challenges you and makes you a better person. I think that's what should be the the main thing you know (laughs) all right man well thank you so much for sharing this story with us you're welcome this is great thank you for having me yeah and uh stick around guys we have more stories okay thank you see you guys